What's up guys, Joan Carranza here and today is Wednesday, right now it's like 7am and I'm gonna be finishing my coffee, then pack real quick, and then I have to leave to catch a train because I've got a rehearsal in our city in Osnabrück, which is like 30 minutes away from here, not that far, um, but I have to catch a train and the rehearsal starts at 10, but I want to be a bit early because I don't want to be late. <laughs> be the reason why the rehearsal starts late and especially because I'm playing as a sub for a gig in like two weeks and it's a Beatles tribute slash cover band but they play songs like they made their own arrangements but in a funk jazz way so it's quite cool it's interesting music some songs are a bit challenging um, but I'm really looking forward to it so stay tuned I'm gonna be taking you throughout the day and I'll catch you guys later What's up guys? We're in Osnabrück right now and I'm walking to a rehearsal room and I'm a bit early so that's good because I get to time to warm up and set up and everything um, and the way here I was listening to the Jamie Lewis podcast uh, two episodes actually the, one, the first one uh, was with Adam Neely really interesting podcast with a lot of different topics on language and sounds and also how the, you know, the, the tone of your instrument affects different areas of your playing. And the one I was listening to right now was with Brian Beller, um, who is the bass player for Joseph Triani and also the Aristocrats and also has done a bunch of different things. Monster bass player, a lot of my rock uh, chops for right hand especially I got from him. Also how to cut through distorted guitars. Amazing bass player, <laughs> but we've got like, I don't know, 10 minutes on foot till I'm there. Um, we're rehearsing for about three hours and I have to go back to my city, to Minster. Um, then I'm gonna work on the demo of the Ibanez, of the five string Ibanez bass that I got at home with, with me at the moment. I already got, you know, before I go on, um, so it's kind of loud right now. Huge thanks to Matthias Blaser and also to Jan Michel Kellerman for recording guitars and drums for me for the demo. So it's gonna be real playing in there, not just MIDI program drums. So that's gonna be really cool. <laughs> um, and when I'm home, I have to, I mean, I have all the ideas pretty much already set up I just need to practice a bit of the riffs a little bit just to get them really tight and also I'm gonna do something new for the or well, I'm gonna try something new for the tone samples so I'm excited to see how that works out um, but yeah that's gonna be the plan for today tomorrow we're rehearsing with the dry dudes kind of late at night and then I'm spending the night there because we have a video shoot on Friday. So I'm gonna try to get this video, this vlog also edited up by tomorrow <laughs> so that I can film all the stuff on Friday and, and Thursday and Friday because we're also playing on, on Saturday. Um, so yeah, <laughs> love traveling, it's cool, love playing. And my hand, I also posted on Instagram a few pictures an exercise that I've been doing and my hand has been feeling really good lately um, it's uh, I don't know <laughs> it's funny how some little things can have a big impact but yeah I'm almost there probably gonna talk a bit about uh, something I noticed the other day when switching up bases one thing that I've noticed is that 24 foot bases kind of have a different tonal character than a bass with 20 or 21, 22 frets because you, know, you get the string which let's keep it simple at 34 inches long right traditional bass scale length you get the string 
and along that string you know you get harmonics that happen and is this easy to notice when you're slapping especially um, when you're bouncing the strings of the frets you know 20 fret or 21 fret bass the place where the strings are bouncing you know produces certain harmonics and when you've got 24 frets usually you're bouncing the string on a 24 fret uh, and that causes other harmonics to pop out so that kind of gives the instrument a different character also what i've noticed is that 20 to 21 or 22 fret bases feel kind of kind of shorter like the reach to the first position is feels shorter to me than with 24 frets um, even though both or those instruments are of the same scale length um, I know it all depends also on the body shape and how the bass hangs on a strap and uh, you know strap pin placement on the horns and everything but even when sitting down if you just let your hand like kind of drop like this you know your thigh and you lift it where where on the instrument you let your hand lands is different uh, depending on on the, the number of frets i've noticed but for example my leg land which has 20 20 frets feels a bit shorter than some of the bases even though all of them are 34 inches straight long so that's something to consider i i, I guess not that I, I, I really don't play up, you know, in the upper ranges, really rarely, probably up to 15th, 17th fret to play E minor pentatonic stuff, <laughs> um, or play a high D, uh, but I don't really need 24 frets. Um, so I think that is also something to consider, like the reach of the instrument, right? And also, uh, how an instrument hangs on a strap because one thing I've also noticed um, by testing a bunch of different bases is that I have a really weird rib cage that kind of pops out and every base sits kind of like at a point where it balances like this it doesn't sit against my body so it's kind of like a tipping point and finding an instrument that balances correctly is kind of tricky because I have to get in a weird position to, to play comfortably standing up um, and some bases due to the you know extra frets or the way the body shape is designed um, or the strapping placement is just really hard for me to, to play comfortably standing up um, so the shorter the reach for me the better <laughs> um, so that's one thing I've noticed I'm gonna have a snack because I'm really hungry um, and I have to have energy to rehearse and it's like 20 minutes still so you're probably gonna hear something of the rehearsal <laughs> Ivan here. Right now it's 3:30 p.m. and I just, I literally just got back home. Uh, I'm really hungry, <laughs> but the rehearsal went great. Um, there are a few spots here and there where I need to check some things out, um, so that I go a bit more, you know, smoother. But overall, it's a good rehearsal. We went over the whole set list. No, nothing major, and I hope it's. it's I hope the weather plays out on the day of the gig, like I said, it's in two weeks um, because we're playing like in front of a lake and I think outside, so you never know here in Germany it rains like crazy um, so I hope the weather is good um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to playing, playing the gig especially because I'm playing with my my cabinet for the first time in a long time I've been going direct for the last couple of gigs um, so it's gonna be cool, you know, feeling some air being pushed 
but right now I'm going to cook something because I'm really hungry and then I'm gonna work on a demo of the five string bass I'm gonna get some ideas together getting everything a bit tighter right and probably if I make it I'm gonna put already fresh strings that I had I got the elixir strings because it still has the Jadario it came with um, yeah and also I think I think I'm gonna make it but um, before I go to bed probably gonna edit what you guys are watching right now so <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put together a quick edit of the vlog because tomorrow Thursday we're, I'm going to rehearse with the dry shoots again and on Friday there's the video shoot so everything has to get done uh, thank you guys for watching let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you guys on the next one